Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to take a look at a sports API. So what we will do is that we want to go and check the documentation for this API football, creating an API key, and then with C Sharp, go and get some information from the API and we will go and display it inside a Blazor server app. So the first thing we have to do before we can actually start coding is to go and sign in because we want to get an API key. So let's go and sign in. And as you can see here, they have four plans that we can choose from, but we just want to go with the free one. That's okay. That's 100 requests per day. And we actually do get a lot of features out of this. So you can just go and say subscribe. And then we will actually be redirected to this rapid API, but that's also okay. We just have to go and say subscribe on this basic zero dollar plan. And actually, because if you hit over 100 requests per day, every request will cost some money after that. So because of that, you actually need to insert a Visa card or MasterCard or any payment details that you have. So you can just go and put that in and then say pay now. So I'll just do it and then I'll start recording again afterwards. So when you have done it, you get this subscription created successfully. So what we can do from here is to go to the endpoints section, because from in here, we can actually just scroll a bit down and you can see we have now the API key here that we can go and use to our requests. The nice thing about rapid API is also that over here, we can actually just click and then tell what technology or what programming language do we use. So we could actually just go and say C sharp. And then again, do we want to use the HTTP client or the wrist sharp? So in this case, I'll just go and use HTTP client. And what that will do is to actually just go and create all the code. For this specific example, it is the time zone that it will get. So in this API documentation, you can see we have version three time zone. So that is this example right here. We could also go over here in the menu and expand the section called fixtures. And then again, choose what endpoint we want to use. So let's just go and take this fixtures endpoint. And now you can see all the code over here. It's actually only this part that's changing because it is the endpoint that we're going to target that actually go and change in this case. So you can see we're now targeting the fixtures and then it actually put in a date so that we actually receive the matches from that date. If we just scroll up a bit, we can see an example of the response here. So we can just click that one. And if we scroll a bit down, you can see we have the response here. So it's actually all the matches that is right here. So if we go and expand this one, number 12, we can actually go and expand the leak. So we can see this is the Indonesian league and that's apparently called Super League. So we can also go and say what teams did play in this match. So we could go and expand the home team and you can see it is this home team against this away team. So we do actually get a lot of information about those matches. Also the goals. I don't really know why it says null here because I just tested some of the other matches and they actually have some goals. You can see here it's going to be 2-2. So maybe they just never got the result from this match. I don't know. Maybe it was never played or something. Okay, so I just dived into it. And as you can see up here, if we open the fixtures tab and then go under status, you can actually see that this match was cancelled. So let's just try to look at a match that is not cancelled. In this, we have the leak from Ethiopia, it's called Premier League. And of course, again, we can go and see the home team and the away team here. We have their names and we do also have their logos. We could just go and copy and paste this to see how their logo. So this is the Ethiopian coffee or something. I don't really know, I don't know this team, but as we can see, they played 2-2. So what I would like to do is to go and retrieve some of this information and display it inside a Blazor server app. So we could go and use this code snippet. There is just a couple of things that we have to change because we don't want to write it in a console, but we will figure that out. So let's go and open Visual Studio 2022 and let's go and create a new project. It will be a Blazor server app and we could just call it football app and say next. We're going to use .NET 6, that's okay. And then we will say create. So now we have our project open. And I actually, in the first case here, we only want to go and edit inside our index.razor file, which is our front page. 
with Blazor, we can just go and add a code section. So we will say code and actually just go and delete some of this. So now we can go back to the API documentation and let's go and take a look at some of this code. So we could just go and copy all this to start with and go and insert it inside our code section. We will of course get some errors here. So if we just start from the top, we can look at this variable called client, which is our HTTP client class. And the reason we cannot use var here is because it can only be used inside a local variable declaration or in script code. So what we can do is actually just to go and say that this is going to be an HTTP client and then that error should be fixed. We can also go and take this HTTP request message and go and say that the request is going to be an HTTP request message. And just to make this look a little bit better, we can go and hit tap on this section so that it indents as it should. So this HTTP request message is actually just where we specify all the things that we want to send with the request. And that's also why we just call it request. So first we say that the method should be a get method. So this is the way we just tell it that it's a get method. Then what URL do we want to target? And that's actually just going inside the request URI. We create a new URI that takes one parameter, which is the URL we want to target inside the API. We also need to specify some headers and these headers is actually some specific names that they have to have. So for example, when we try to connect to this API dash football dash version one P rapid API.com version three, we do need to specify this X dash rapid API dash key and insert our own API key and also specify the host name here. So the next section here, I actually want to put that inside a method that is going to be run when we click a button on the page. So let's just make some more space. So now I just created this method. It's a public method that is going to be async. It's going to return a task and we just call it get matches. So now we can go and take the code here and put inside this method. And now you can see we do not actually have any errors now, but we of course don't want to go and write it in the console here. So now let's try to scroll up here and create a button in HTML. We will just make a name that is get matches. So that's just the text inside the button. And then we want to go and create an unclick event listener here that is going to trigger this get matches when we click the button. So as you can see down here, when we actually create the request, we take this HTTP client that we created, and then we say we want to send something async, and we send the request. And when we get something back, we get the response here. And then in this case, we can take the response and ensure that it's a, it is a success status code that we get in return. And after that, we can just go and take the response look at the content inside and read it as a string async in this case. So that actually just give us a body here where it is actually just a string. So instead of displaying it in the console like this, I will actually delete this and go up and create a new variable up here. So we want to create a string and we could just call it for matches. And in the beginning, it will just be an empty string. So when we load the page, there will be nothing in this matches string. So what we can do now is to just go and say that the matches should be equal to the body. So let's try to test it. And if we get any errors, we will of course fix it. So this is our Blazor server app. And when we click get matches, it will just take a second. Okay, so I just debugged this situation that we are in right now. And we do actually get the information, but we just need Blazor to actually update the UI. So let's go back. So the way that we tell Blazor to update the UI, when we actually get some new information inside a variable, just like this matches, because the body is going to be saved in matches. And then the UI also have to update. So we just go and say that we want to await this invoke async method where we say that the state has changed and you don't really have to think about this so much. It is just a way to update the UI. But actually the most important thing that we missed in this case was to actually go and display the variable. 
so we didn't even display it up here so no matter if we do this call or not we would never see the text so of course we have to go and take this matches and go and display it inside a paragraph tag so now we should get some data and we could actually just go and say that no data to begin with inside the matches just so that we can actually see that it's going to be displayed so let's try to test it again so we have our button and we do also have the no data string that we just display so let's go and click get matches and now you can see we actually get all the JSON from all the matches that we could get from this specific date. So I think this is it for this video. We did get some matches here. I will be creating a follow up for this video. So just look for part two because in that video we are going to display this a little bit more nice instead of just having everything inside one string. So go and have a nice day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.